Gremulous, old friend, you know why we have called this meeting. We're here to discuss the recent failures within the Tan M territory. Old friend, you do realize I had nothing to do with it. I told you that the Tans would resist ferociously, and yet you persist in the invasion. I know that, Gromulus replied. But it's only a matter of time before we overwhelm them. But now, it's time for new ideas and new leadership to be brought forth. I am very sorry, Gremulus, but I'm afraid that your time is about up. You've already decided to replace me with this urchin to my... Over here. This meeting is just a formality! Yes, I have reached a decision. The Gherkin, as you reported, is Kaltar. He is more than capable of expanding the front in Amberica to new levels. It's time that you that he took the reins for a little bit. Don't worry, my good sir. I have every intention of Insurance tans pay for what they have tried to do to our country, and we'll get those valuable resources for you, sir. And please, call me Max. Very well, Max. You are now in charge of the invasion of Amberica. Gremulus, you are to assist him in every way possible. You're dismissed. Gremulus sat stood there, thinking to himself. It's only a matter of time before he decides to take matters into his own hands. Gremulus walks away. It was about time to kick the revolution into overdrive. Tanbar, is the contingency plan ready to be implemented? Yes, your excellency. I will admit that Tannenberg's attack has, shall we say, even the score for green and tan losses. But however, our new offensive is about soon to begin. It's only a matter of time and when you wish us to do so. Tambar is a good general and he has a great plan. However, I would advise caution, my, your majesty. The Tans cannot really afford the manpower losses it would take to defeat the Greens in a head of a long battle. Still, I think that there are some cases in which limited offensives can be conducted until the full might of the contingency can be brought to bear. Very well then. We shall only engage the enemy in skirmishing raids for the, t for the moment. Then, when the time is right, we will smash them out of our homeland. Tal Akbar, gentlemen. Meeting after the historical battle between purples, yellows, and reds, Miotika decides to meet with the yellow commander, a man that he knows that is known simply as Antonio. Antonio, you son of a gun. You're your appearance could not have come at any better time. Thank you. Thank you very much, my dear Frelo, and my dear friend. I assure you, the pleasure was all mine. Antonio, you do realize that your country is officially neutral in all, all ongoing wars. Why have you decided to break it now? Last night, the country's leader, Giorno, had a vision from Yell himself. The, this uh, war is uh, not uh, going to end if Red Doss uh, takes over the entire world. You see, uh, communist states are bad for business, and it would grow even poorer if Red Doss uh, is the only customer. So, we help Violet Nam now, so that we have more customers later. It is as simple as that. Does this mean that you will help us out further along in this entire war? Our people are weary and not made for large-scale wars like the Red Docens have been offering us. Not quite. 
my government, my people's government is, uh, or if it is now, willing to sign a ceasefire between your people and Redossa. And it is quite likely that Rosse Vajalin would accept. You see, if he does not, the vital food shipments that have been sent to his country from our uh, official backroom dealers was to suddenly uh, a stop. And then many of Red Odosan civilians will have a bad case of a uh, <laughs> starvation. Ah, your people always had a way with words. Your civilian economy is absolutely best of all. A true model. Oh, yes. We realos know how to make money. And while war can be a profitable, eternal war is a not. Don't worry. You will soon find your way out of this war in no time. I can guarantee that. Still, though, I assume that you have a drink. We must have wine and a toast for the end of this war. This is Violet Nam, old friend, Mertica said. We only have rice wine, for rice is the only thing that grows well in the jungles. Antonio looked a bit distasteful. Wine, nonetheless. We shall make do. Come now, let us go to an... Let us go to some shelter, and you and I can drop some stories while we're at it, eh? Looking over the corpses of what has happened, Carl and his friend, the survivors of the Grey's assault into Orange Territory, look around. There has to be a logical explanation for this. The, re the Oranges are an honorable people, and they won't break a non-aggression pact, especially in the name of peace. You're crazy, Carl, his friend replied. The Orangers would do anything to suit their needs. Carl looked closely at the orange body. It looked like an orange, all right, but it wasn't quite an orange. He took out his pocket knife and scraped some of the skin. Carl! Good us. What is it? Look! Carl's friend looked closely at it. Red. That means... Yes. It means that this was no accident. The Reds had orchestrated this whole event just so they could keep us at war with each other. And that's virtually guaranteed now. But why? Isn't it obvious? If, the, if we are busy fighting each other, the Reds can be able to swallow up Violet Nam. Well, they're going to have a hard time of doing that. But I'm still concerned, so... Carl Ad said. What this could mean? More importantly, how far does this Red Inception go? The priest could be infected as far as we are as concerned. What do we do? Carl's friend asked. It's simple, Johan. We must go out and... We are the only ones who know the truth. We have to go and tell it to the people. The Great Kaiser could believe us. <sighs> it's our only chance. Two friends made haste towards the capital. The Great Kaiser must, be no must know that this was the result of treachery. Not from Orange, but from Red Dosa. Within the dark bunker, of the Orgistani capital, a silent coup has taken place. Ataturk, what is the meaning of this? You know fully well what this is about. You know what this is about. I'm here to restore true leadership to Orgistan. I am the true leader. By birthright. Birth means stiddly squat in for Orgistanans. Everyone knows that only the strongest and the cleverest can be the truly leader of Orangistan. And of which I am both of those things. Listen to me, my Emperor. I'm here to make you a very interesting deal. What is it, Ataturk? What do you want? It's simple. 
My proposal is fairly and even handed. You accept this, and who knows what happens. Well, go ahead. I'm listening. My proposal is simple. You will transfer any and all power to me. You will also purposefully address me as the Lydair. I will be in charge of the day-to-day -day stuff. I will be making the decisions and the powers from all Orgestanis from here on out. And I, in return, will not kill you. You get to live on in luxury. As a sort of figurehead. Better a figurehead than dead. The people still respect you. And I need you to help Ordestan be brought into the modern age. Will you aid me or thwart me? All right, Ataturk. You've got your wish. Excellent. I will have some documents to s for you to sign. Be prepared for them in the morning. And don't think about running away. This entire bunker is locked down. Any attempt to running will only lead to your untimely demise. And if I have to rule this country without you, I shall. In a top secret location, Rosef Jolin once again talks to his council. We've learned a lot from the mistakes we have made in the Violet Nam. What is necessary in order for the glorious Red Army to be a bit more effective? Well, for starters, Comrade Jolin, we should not rely exclusively on massive assaults alone. Human waves assault soon to get our men killed quite a bit. I think that we need to invest more into some tanks and artillery to help complement them, so that they're not simply being s sent to their deaths. It's more than just that, Vladimir. We need a complete and total reorganization of our, doct of our military doctrine. These purples were able to take advantage of our doctrine at every step of the way. More importantly, our doctrine of strictly offensive action, while, while useful, tends to get bogged down with underneath determined defenders. I see. Is there anyone else who agrees with these statements? Uh, I'm still kind of new at this position, so uh, I don't really know what to say, sir. Um, <clears throat> comrade. Not only do we need better equipment, but we need doctrines to help out with... to use that equipment. Luckily, I have just the man for the job. A mysterious figure enters into their secret meeting. This is newly promoted Supreme Commander Krukov. He shall be instrumental in reforming our doctrine. Da, Comrade Jolin. I live only to serve the Union. So, this is the place where the great Subutai met his end? Yes. It is, Timor said. And I am saddened that I have betrayed my best friend. Do not worry about your friend's demise. He died a good death, a warrior's death. There is no higher honor. I know. He went down the same way as our ancestors. It's just he didn't need to do that. There was just so much destruction at hand here. All for a cause that wasn't worth backing anymore. I understand how you feel, Timor. Which is why I suspected you turned him in and informed us that this attack was happening in the first place. For that, you have the Blue Nation's gratitude. Say, how would you like to become Pink Island's personal representative on the council? In the Parliament, even? That would be wonderful, sir. I wish to do my part to ensure that the Pinks become a full and prosperous member of the Blue Garian Empire. Excellent! Here's to a prosperous future. Cheers to a new beginning. 
So, my son, how did you like your experience of combat? It was more than I could ask. So much death and suffering, I had never really experienced it before. Now you understand the lesson I was trying to teach you. No one should go to war unless absolutely necessary. I understand that now, Father. I didn't before, but I do now. Good. You're, you're wising up. You may be a great leader for our people yet. Still, we now have a new issue at hand. My diplomats have informed me that the Yellows have broken their recent strict neutrality and have aided the Purples in driving Red Dosa from their lands. Seems like the world is devolving into war, Father. I'm afraid it is, my son. However, Blue Geria must not be left out this time. We can no longer afford to sit on our island and watch as the world burns around us. Father, are you absolutely certain that you want to intervene in this? You've taught me not to do such a thing. I am afraid we have no choice, my son. But now, that leaves us to the biggest question of our lives. Which enemy do we engage first? <laughs>